Okay, good morning everyone, uh, and thank you for join, uh, joining us in our course of related with data monitoring and validation. Uh, today agendas I include uh, how to set the vision in our city, uh, why it's important to establish a team for the successful implementation of our SIGAP. Uh, we are going to uh, have a presentation of our energy modeling and scenario, scenarios, data processing and verification, and how uh, to implement and monitoring our sustainable energy and climate action plan. Let's start. So, um, as Harry said, uh, my name is Mirtos Kurbathi. I'm an environmental engineer working for the Cyprus Energy Agency, mainly on um, uh, SECAPs themselves. Um, so this first uh, module, let's say, is about vision setting. <clears throat> Start, uh, with talking about why it's important to set a vision when you're starting this process of creating a SECAP or any other uh, plan with a municipality. It's important, firstly, to know where you want to go um, Yes, under the covenant of mayor, for example, we have some minimum goals uh, for each municipality, but each, each municipality can set also a higher goal or can set other sub uh, goals um, or related to other topics. Uh, so it's important to have a common vision um, for this purpose, but also Based on that, to plan correctly the steps to get there. If you are not familiar at all with the structure of these plans, um, after setting a goal for, um, let's say, reduction of uh, uh, greenhouse gas emissions, you have to put down specific actions uh, that will get you by the end of the timeline that you have, time frame that you have, that will get you there. So if you don't know where you want to go, you can't plan accordingly. Um, also to be able to refocus. We've seen this a couple of times that maybe because of an economic crisis or COVID or whatever uh, <laughs> event that cannot be planned, cannot be forecasted, uh, some of the actions uh, that were initially planned were delayed or some of the forecasts for um, national or international trends were changed. So we need to be able to adapt um, uh, the whole plan to eventually get to uh, the initial goal. Very important is uh, the two last points, to have acceptance by the stakeholders that will also lead to mitigating conflict. Um, vision setting is extremely important because um, we are working in the municipality level, we have a vast range of uh, stakeholders from uh, political uh, persons and um, policymakers to all the citizens, really, and businesses, anyone who has interest within the boundaries of the municipality. So each one of them has different uh, goals, has different priorities. So it's important to set the vision at a higher level, let's say, and then. As technocrats, we can come and put in the actions that will get us there. So if, we, if you don't do this at the beginning, you risk getting into conflict later on, and this will stall the whole process. Um, I will show you a couple of tools in these presentations that we have already used in a couple of um, interactions with municipalities, but also with the national government. And hopefully you can use it as well um, at your local context. The first one uh, is called the News Cover. It's a very simple tool. Uh, I think it's a good starter for anyone who, who maybe doesn't have much experience in facilitating uh, stakeholder meetings or, or groups um, at this level. The idea is that um, you make uh, you invite in you in this workshop process, we invite stakeholders from different backgrounds. You mix them together in groups. 
So the groups have to be representative of the society. And then you ask them to decide on a common um, a news uh, front page in the year of your date deadline. So for us, it was 2030. So in this example, I told the participants, you have to design the ideal um, front page of a newspaper in, in 2030 for the, this, this specific example is for the NCP, for the National Energy and Climate Plan. So this encourages the collaboration and also um, makes the, brings them into a consensus at a very simple level. It's important when doing this to tool to emphasize that you can dream big, the sky's the limit. So we have to, oftentimes when we have this discussion, the, the conversation very quickly turns to, yes, but we have this economic barrier. We don't have enough resources. Uh, this is not pol possible in our location or um, the policies are not um, helpful to achieve this. This tool is not about restriction, it's about possibility. So it's important to let them know from the beginning um, how to do it. So this is on the right, you can see just the, this is a random example and it's just jargon, it doesn't mean anything. Uh, it just explain how it works. And this is the actual um, example of uh, results of the NECP workshop that we have done with policymakers and business and so on. It's fascinating to me um, that although in, in discussions before this tool, a lot of the policymakers or the technocrats were like, oh, it's not possible to achieve higher goals in Cyprus because we are an island and we are limited. We don't have interconnection. Um, it's fossil based. It's uh, fascinating how all the teams ended up with a very similar dream uh, about Cyprus in 2030. So we, we know that we want the same things at the higher level. How we get there is the next step. All right. The second tool I want to show is a bit more complicated. Um, and Harris, we can share the canvas uh, after the end of the uh, seminar today. Uh, it's called Future future radars and the idea is to get from the vision back to the, to reality to the actions so you can see in the right side of the canvas um future time the vision if you do both these exercises the the future time is where you put the first tool that we use so we get there how do we get there um so this tool is good because it shows you how you can realize your vision and select feasible actions. Uh, you have to strike a balance between what is uh, feasible, um, but also dreaming big. So not constraining yourself, not uh, promising un, un, uh, unrealizable actions. So to strike a balance, you can use this tool. I will show you exactly how this can be done. Um, and also, it's it's at the same time a timeline, so it can show you which action pre predates other actions in order to be able to um, time them at the right uh, space. Let's see. So, as you can see, uh, how that this tool is used is you ask the participants either as a, as groups or individually to write the actions that they think that will get them to the vision in post-its and then we put the, um, the post-its on the canvas which is a three-dimensional canvas we need to think of it like that so from left to right is time and then you have feasibility and control so let's see if we can ah is a point okay so if i put uh, a post-it here, it means I want it to happen early in the process. It means also that it's under our control. So whatever stakeholder is doing the action 
can't do it, it's under their control. But it's not very feasible because of other uh, barriers, let's say. So the further down I move towards the center is the best. So the closest to the center line is the best in terms of feasibility and control. Uh, the opposite is having something here, which is very feasible, a very feasible action, uh, but it's out of our, our control. So if I am, let's say, um, a, a, an industry body, um, I can say a policy action that is very easy to implement, but it's out of my control. So put it here. What we want at the end is actions within this blue triangle because they are the easiest to achieve and with maximum impact, let's say. So this is what I explained, maximum feasibility out of control, minimum feasibility under control, and the ideal is in the middle. And what if something is out of our control and is not very, very feasible or impactful? We cross these ones out. This is a process of also elimination of unfeasible or let's say in this in this situation uh, useless actions so this is another tool it needs some practicing but it has also been used in many of our workshops and it's very helpful all right also if you have any questions i can see you you can also speak and i can uh, answer any questions as we go uh, moving on we also did a lot of work um, in the cities, in the villages, in the municipalities. We need to have this interaction with the people in order to get, um, get the feedback. It's, it's easier to work with some specific groups in a workshop setting. So uh, citizen representatives, CSOs, NGOs, industry, um, academia, and government, local or national government, it's easier to work with them in a workshop setting because we, you can't have large numbers, but we need to have a larger input from the wider society of the municipality we're working with. So what do we do, um, or we try to do, is engage with them through various tools. It could be as simple as um, a questionnaire that can be given to them either physically or online with them with the streams of the municipality uh, or it could be something more interactive that will uh, be at the community level bring people outside this is an example we did for the municipality of nicosia where we had um, a living street for a day let's say in the old town of nicosia and we have different stations where people would be attracted to for these purposes, but also give us some feedback for their municipality. So what we did, uh, the first picture you can see, we did the bird feeders and um, smaller rainwater gardens. We also had a bike uh, fixing workshop. We had uh, crafts. And then at the bottom right, you see what is written in Greek is until 2030, I would like our Nicosia too. And then it's different things, which says, for example, parks or uh, more public spaces, um, something about happy people in the um, city, about um, respecting people's rights. So. It's, a, it's on a wider level, let's say, but it's good because we can uh, take from this what we need to design the actions. So this is a, a nice specific action within Nicosia. Another kind of workshop we did with a specific neighborhood. This is it. Um, this is under um, uh, an initiative we do with the Energy Agency and the Cyprus University of Technology. It's called Yudonia Plus, which means Neighborhood Plus. And we do, the idea is to do um, small scale um, interventions in, in neighborhoods to improve the quality of the neighborhood. So we gathered all the uh, neighbors and we did this workshop where they had these questions. It's so 
right and the bottom left is sort of a SWOT analysis, but in a more simplified way. What annoys you in your street? What is your worries about the future of your neighborhood? What would you like to see? What do you like? And we gathered this uh, information on post-its. Uh, we also had pictures of the neighborhood around for them to see and point out uh, what they liked or not. And then the other two pictures that you see people over a map, uh, it's a map of the neighborhood and people were pointing with stickers, the points that they don't like, the points that they like, and also points that uh, for improvement. So this is another way to engage them in a more physical way and gather what they think, what they want to see. But this is just two of the examples we have done here in Cyprus. There are other thousands more examples. Um, I just put some pictures here from other happenings in other cities. So it could be something like a board or stickers that you write what you want to see in your neighborhood. And other tools in the right is about voting, pretty much voting about what is it you like or don't like about your community. And it's a sort of a, a gamified way of gathering this information, which is more interactive and attractive as well to the people. Um, I think, yeah, this is all about the first uh, session for visions.